Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, with an estimated population of over 140 million, spread over 36 states and the federal capital territory. A study carried out by Enhancing Financial Innovation and Access, EFINA, in August 2010, revealed that 39.2 million, representing 46.3% of the adults in Nigeria, are excluded from financial services. This reveals the existence of a huge gap in the provision of financial services to a large number of the active poor and low-income groups. The effect of not addressing this situation appropriately would further accentuate poverty and slow down growth and development. Microfinance has continuously demonstrated through success stories and impact studies that it is an effective tool for poverty alleviation and economic development. It empowers many living in poverty to increase their economic activity and income, build up assets, prepare for emergencies and better invest in education, health and housing, thereby improving the overall quality of their lives. The provision of financial services offered on a small scale to the poor and disadvantaged in the society has been known to greatly mitigate against the effect of poverty on the lives of people. The Microfinance Policy and Supervisory and Regulatory Framework by the Central Bank of Nigeria in 2005 and the 2011 revision were aimed at reversing this. However, despite the good intentions of the framework, the emergence of microfinance banks comprising mostly of commercial banks who could not meet the recapitalization requirement of the central bank, renamed community banks and newly registered microfinance banks are still not reaching the most deprived and underbanked population at the grassroots. The burden of knowledge on how to provide financial opportunities for this large population of economically active poor people brought some Nigerians out of their lucrative employment with United Nations to start Grooming People for Better Livelihood Center in 2006. Grooming Center, as the name suggests, uh, is aimed at empowering people uh, to provide the means of livelihood. And, and basically, you know, it came out of our professional experience. Like, you know, uh, we came out of the UN system. I came out of a broad experience from UNDP to UNICEF, as well as my other partners, Mr. Tayo, Noel, and all the rest. And while we were at the UN, we were exposed to various aspects of development. And we came in contact with what poverty is, various phases of poverty, various manifestations of poverty, various causes of poverty. And as you know, the UN in general works to build capacity of partner governments to address key development issues. And so we started asking ourselves, how do we balance the social factors and the economic factors? And we said, OK, we want to demonstrate that. So basically, for us, it became some kind of burden of knowledge, because we knew that it is possible to balance the economic and the social factors of development. And most of the time, you find out that the UN programs, the other multilateral and bilateral programs, are highly focused on various elements. And so we decided that we needed to come out and to demonstrate that this is possible to do. The other thing we wanted to show is that, you know, we can translate capacities that we have built, quite acquired. And there are quite a, a lot of art Nigerians out there who have served the UN system, served other bilateral and multilateral agencies for a long time, and have acquired very good knowledge that they could apply to development. But they're not doing that. So we said, OK, let's also demonstrate that we can become social entrepreneurs who can just come out and show that we can apply all this knowledge that we have. And that's how Grooming Center was born. Grooming Center started full operation as a one-branch institution from a modest office located at Ejibu, a high-density neighborhood in the outskirts of Lagos. It has positively touched the lives of many small-scale women traders who before now had no hope of getting finance to improve their businesses. 
The services of Grooming Center is hinged on global best services and as a model institution, it has subjected itself to both performance and social ratings internationally. International rating is supposed to be done after three years that the organization would have been in operation. But we decided to do ours two years, six months. So we applied and uh, we're glad that micro rates agreed to come for the rating. And we had the first rating in 2009. Um, the scores was very impressive. We had a B in both in social and performance rating. And rating is done every two, two years. So we opted for the second rating and this was done. Our second rating was better than the first rating. Uh, we now had three stats over five in socials and then beta, which is better than B in performance rating. Um, and this has assisted us a lot in putting us in the limelight. We are now in the committee of uh, financial experts. Uh, we now I, we are able to assess funds, and that's why if you look at our uh, uh, you know debt for portfolio, most of our funds are from the external sources. Those people we call microfinance vehicles. You know, so that's what rating has done for us. According to MicroRate International, factors that contributed to Grooming Center having this good score include clear vision and mission, provision of services to the very low market segment, strong leadership, very good methodology and portfolio at risk, high sustainability and access to international funding, amongst others. It's important for any organization that is looking at improving the quality of life of the people you work with, especially those people we are trying to provide service for. And so it's really jamming to us to do impact assessment of our activities. We have what we called General Assembly, where we meet our women. And in the General Assemblies, we've had a series of you know, discussions with the women, and they've told us in real terms how the little drops of water had made an ocean for them. And this is what has encouraged us to do more. Um, to be specific, there's a woman, the first woman that we gave loan to, was the first one that I met in one of our um, field work. And she told me how well, the little money, we, then we were giving 15,000 as a startup loan. Um, how the little money we gave her to start her business that actually assisted her to now become not just a retailer in pepper and um, tomato. Now she sells to those that resell. According to her, she made a lot of money from the 15,000 era. And um, today, she lives in her own house, a two bedroom apartment in Ejibo, Lagos. And she owned two businesses, fruit selling, as well as supplying of pepper and uh, tomato to other retailers in the area. With a vision of becoming a leading player in the microfinance market in Nigeria within seven years of its existence, Grooming Center is today present in 14 states and the Federal Capital Territory with 196 branches and has on its payroll over 1,000 employed members of staff. The number of clients that the institution has served since its inception stands at over 1 million. Interestingly, the rate of loan recovery by the institution consistently stands at over 99%. Grooming Center is a classic example of the determination of a few Nigerians to make a positive impact in the socio-economic development of Nigeria through financial empowerment of the poor who toil daily to put food on the table for their children and households.